time is biological. Time is made by the rhythm of metabolism. Time is the unfolding of cellular processes, the transcripting of protein, the building of membrane, transport of materials. Time is a phenomenon created by life itself. Time, temperature, and weather are all related through the concept of change. They are, in fact, varieties of change. And time and temperature are very intimately related in invertebrate and cold-blooded animals. As the temperature falls, time speeds up. As it rises, time slows. This is why for an insect, a grasshopper, the night seems to pass instantly and the long day lasts forever. Higher animals such as ourselves with a regular heartbeat and regular breathing are not aware that we are surrounded by many, many kinds of time happening simultaneously. One could almost say that there are as many kinds and speeds of time as there are species of life on this planet. There are six, seven billion people on this planet experiencing different fates. While someone is getting married, someone is dying. While someone is getting divorced, someone else is starting out on their honeymoon. So how then can there be a single map of time. Well, the single map of time is nothing more than the averaging of all these different realities. So, for example, when we think of history, without contest, I think, uh, the 1500s were a very novel era in history. However, if you lived in Lapland, it may have been boring as hell. So it's a matter of not only being in the right time, but being in the right place. This is why in the modern context, there is no excuse for boredom, because if you find yourself in the wrong place, you at least live in an era of great novelty and can move to those geological locations where the novelty is being manifested. living at different scales of time. Some people have a 1994 mind, some people have a 1955 mind, some people are living in the 19th century. about your resonance concepts. Can you explain me your uh, time wave theory? Yes, my time wave theory, which would replace the scientific notion that time is a perfectly featureless and smooth surface, is the idea that time actually has a structure. It has a topology. It can be described somewhat in the way that a stock market can be described as a series of rising and falling fluctuations of novelty. And over long periods of time, this novelty has accumulated in the universe, building up first 
stars and then later complex organic molecules ultimately issuing into intelligent life and a culture such as our own. I believe that process in the universe is not driven from the events of the past, but rather drawn toward a kind of transcendental attractor that is ahead of us in time. very close to encountering this transcendental attractor. It's almost as though time can be thought of as the surface of a small lake or pond. When that surface begins to boil and churn, it means an enormous protean form is about to break through. History, which is only 20,000 years old, is the churning of the surface of time. And as that churning becomes more violent, as time accelerates, we are approaching ever closer to the transcendental object. And when, ultimately, it breaks through into ordinary space-time, it will be as though the entire planet has collided with a hyperdimensional object. And I now believe that this point in time, this nexus of hyperdimensionality, is less than 20 years in the future. My mathematical calculations cause me to believe that it will occur at the winter solstice of 2012 AD, when the galactic center is eclipsed by the solstice sunrise. Time flies like an arrow. Time flies like an arrow. Time flies like an arrow. You can see them here, inside the temple of the invaders, the saboteurs. The time flies, small insects on the glass, from another galaxy, perhaps. Time flies eat the arrow, they eat the arrow of time. If time is not an arrow, time can branch. The time flies in your head, the time termites, the time flees. The time flees from the Sirius galaxy. Oh yeah, it's the short time mob that's responsible. They're the most dangerous of the extraterrestrial invaders on this planet right now. They're always stealing time. And the only way to evade them is to remain uh, in a state of continuous attention and astonishment at everything. If you're not paying attention, they move in and take over your whole life. You're like you get up, you write a letter, you go to the post office, you post it, and you find it's four in the afternoon. What happened? The short time mob stole most of your time. novas medidas. O senhor comendador... Não há maneira das pessoas chegarem antes da hora. Isto é uma maçada, é uma grande inquietação. O senhor comendador tem medidas muito graves. E os patinhos? Os patinhos? Enfim. Ah, este hobby é que me calma muito. Duas horas. Estranho. Graça. Senhor Comendador, como está? Os escritórios estão ao ter tido caso. Esta reunião de manhã, desculpe-me estar ainda aqui com o meu hobby preferido. Eu quero isto tudo hoje arrumado durante a tarde. Senhor... Os empregados... Todos a trabalhar. Senhor Comendador Esperança Martins, há dois pontos que lhe teria focar. Para além do facto da reunião desta manhã ter sido bastante revolucionária, não é verdade? Uh, os nossos dossiês de África correm grandes perigos. São duas horas e cinco barata. É verdade. Estamos todos muito desorteados, Senhor Comendador Esperança Martins. Até agora só chegou a menina salada. 
Temos que alterar esta situação. É necessário fazer implementar as suas medidas o mais depressa possível. Temos que tomar medidas drásticas, Marata. Medidas drásticas. Uh, Eu espero a sua colaboração para resolvermos este, este assunto de uma vez por todas. Com certeza, com certeza, com certeza. Será tudo efetuado como pretende. A sua vontade será satisfeita, senhor comendador. Eu tudo arrumado, Marata. Tudo aquilo roubava. As pessoas têm que chegar, enfim. Tem que haver uma certa... Um, numerologia, uma Tempo certa... Tempo é dinheiro, Marata. Tempo é dinheiro. A nossa instituição não está a sair prestigiada. Estamos a deixar isto cair tudo para o chão, Marata. I do an experiment in my seminars where people listen to sounds and they all hear different sounds. And after they discover that they all hear different sounds living in different oral realities, then I ask them how long the experiment lasted and they all make different guesses as to the time. Some say 15 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half. It goes as high as four minutes. It depends on the extent to which the short time mob is taking over their brains. If the short time mob is taking over your brains, you got 15 seconds when somebody else has four minutes. Uh, Burroughs, uh, the great uh, physicist Louis Mass Burroughs, uh, discovered the short time mob in Tangier about uh, 15 years ago. They've been moving in on other cities ever since. Oh, Sr. Tomé, você está muito atrasado, Sr. Maior. O nosso arquivo está a cair em desprestígio junto do grande pretrão. Nossa! Não picou, não picou! Picou, picou, Sr. Maior, é necessário arrumar aí a secretária. Obrigado. Sr. Comendador, por acaso não tem um melhoral, não? Nem melhoral, nem outra coisa qualquer, não estou a ficar a hora. Estou nervosíssima, Sr. Comendador. As bichas, não é verdade? É desculpa do costume. Posso não ir à posso... casa de banho de barata? Hum, pode. Não pode é fumar. Oh, Já chegou o Cabral. Olá, Cabral. Sr. Barata, desculpa, amor. É foto um fico. Comenda do não só a nossa instituição corre sérios riscos de sobrevivência como os nossos empregos não estão a ser devidamente assegurados. Eventualmente vamos todos para a rua, incluindo eu próprio. Ah. Estava a minha prótese, a minha mulher. Como é que está a sua prótese? Está boa a sua prótese. Ah, a mulher é que está. Disorder has no structure. High temperatures, high speeds of time. You can't keep track. Nothing makes sense. At the very low temperatures, in the frozen blue time, there's no disorder. Somewhere in between is the zone of chaos. LH. LH 94, 94 is tuned for a system of maximum, system of maximum chaos. chaos. The temperature zone, the temperature is, zone fluctuating, is fluctuating between, between mm -hmm. frozen, frozen mm -hmm. too hot and the too hot. The 
in this way, in present-day Lisbon, with the time catastrophe that we've had, we can expect to find uh, different kinds of species emerging from the cracks between reality. Consegue enfrentar estas graves alterações climatéricas que nos têm perturbado estes últimos tempos? Através da possessão de, de uma nova cueca da Viriato, chamada a Lusotron, que contém lusolastic, uma substância corpórea que, ao longo dos anos, se vai tornando sólida Sim, e que muscula imensamente o órgão viril. É o crédito à oh, dia, você deixa me atrapalhar. Ora bem. Oh, bom dia. Aquela encomenda da África. Uau! Barato. Desculpe-me. Não é muito bem, obviamente. As alterações emocionais e climatéricas a não perturbar -me. Como eu estava a dizer, as cuecas luz ou tronco têm várias vantagens, entre as quais também eh, são um convite à fundação. E vou -te dizer porquê. A cueca Lusotron tem luz elástico, meses a fio. As camadas vão se incorporando até a cueca sólida poder ser considerada um preservativo perfeito. Oh, meu dia, você há de emprestar essas cuecas fantásticas. Uh, Usam-se vários meses consecutivos, não é? De que forma tem? Duram anos. <risos> I've seen this sort of thing in the Amazon, but never as dramatically as here in Lisbon. Here you have the Christ of Rio de Janeiro and the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. It's a perfect example of historical eras melting into each other. Places distant in time and space bleed into each other. Time distortion. When I've seen time distortion, in the past, it's the good times go fast, the bad times go slow. You can reverse it uh, in certain ways, smoking certain kinds of cigarettes may make time go slower. are two, my friend, the control of the breath, which controls heartbeat, but more importantly, the use of hallucinogenic plants such as have been discovered in the Amazon by the Aborigines. They understand, you see, that the consciousness of the plants is a different kind of time, a much slower time. So if we would enter into that sort of time, we must take the plant into our body. It cannot be done any other way. This is the secret of shamanism. Then we enter into the time of the plant mind, the Gaian mind, that moves much more slowly. Can the future affect the present? Can the present affect the past? Well, according to Bell's theorem, it can. According to Bell's theorem, everything in the universe affects everything else every which way in space-time. So therefore, what I am doing right now, this very moment, is affecting everything back to the Big Bang 
and the things that are happening a million years in the future are affecting me standing in this winery today, right now. It sort of makes you stop and think, that kind of thing. It's sort of like the young lady named Bright, whose speed was much faster than light, and she departed one day in a relative way and returned on the previous night. Even so, there's the persistent delusion that time is being used up and you can't go back to the past. Rudy, if it's true that we can't travel further back in time than the first time machine, doesn't that mean when time travel is invented that such machines will appear from all over the future? It might. Uh, an even simpler statement of that is an example of a closed causal loop where the inventor of the first time machine inevitably, when it works, he'll travel back and help himself invent the machine. So this, uh, like you mentioned earlier, somebody's traveling back in time, he meets an old woman, she gives him a watch. He travels further back in time, meets her as a younger woman, and gives her the watch. So where does the watch come from, as you said? And the way I would think of this, a closed causal loop, who made the watch? Where does the pattern come from? Uh, perhaps our universe is the watch. Think of time as a higher dimension, a direction perpendicular to all the directions that we're in. We're flying forward through time. A person eats every day, a person excretes every day. Atoms come into you, atoms go out of you. You're a braid in time. You're like a long linked braid of atoms. Some come in, some go out. In space-time, you're nothing more than a pattern, a pattern in space-time, a long, linked braid. So what's you? Nothing solid, a pattern of information, a pattern, a pattern of information, a pattern, a pattern of information. Think of the universe as like a war between habit and novelty. That's the great dualism, habit. It means repetition of pattern, momentum, entropy. That's habit. And novelty means symmetry breaking, new connections, and advance into the future. So this ebb and flow of novelty versus habit is the real story of how the universe works, but science has not even talked about it. And what we really need is an entirely new view of what time is. The view of time that we're operating with is the view that time is like a perfectly smooth surface. Every moment is potentially like every other moment. If you're measuring the charge of the electron, it doesn't matter whether you do it on a Tuesday or a Sunday, because time is assumed to be an absolute, perfect, featureless plane. But when you look at nature, Nothing has this mathematical perfection. Everything, Everything is, is modified, modified by factors. So, so why not why then think, of, think time of time as, as uh, uh, an irregular, irregular surface? The ebb and, ebb and flow, flow two, two different, different kind, kind of forces, forces that create, create then, then the kind, the kind of, of experience, experience of the world, of the world that we're, that we're having, having, where there's gain, loss, novelty, and habit, years of boredom, sudden surprises, everything ruled by the unexpected. Science builds beautiful models, but they don't come anywhere near to the felt experience of our lives. That's the thing. 
mean, it's one thing to be able to predict the path of a artillery shell or an electron, but what we want to understand is how do affairs work? How do empires fall? How do people fall in love? These kinds of things, the things that actually make up our own world of experience. A provisão do valor. Cacilheiro. Cacilheiro. E está embarcadiço em, em que navio? Álvares Cabral. Ah, Álvares. Álvares. Cabral. Portanto, Álvares com assento no A, não é verdade? Sim, para aquele lado. Sim, senhor. E, e, e qual é o seu número, se faz favor? 1328. 1328. 28. Barra 86. Uh, barra. Um... Barra para aquele lado. Uh... Mas eu não percebo o que é que me está a tirar esses dados todos e não fiz nada. Eu sei que sou um animal extinto, mas uh, continuemos o interrogatório. A uh, uh, sua idade. Eu disse-lhe. Por favor. Oh, eu disse-lhe quando lá chegou que eu não vinha. Uh, desculpe. E só eu vi. vi que os senhores estavam eu em só vi pleno porque eu sou uma mulher honrada. Respeito. Eu só vi porque sou uma mulher honrada. Respeito na via marítima. Quem você está a olhar também, ó? Tanto. Nunca viu? Oh, meu dia. Eu acho extremamente negativo o facto da extinção da guarda fiscal. Não. talk about the past, but really there's all the composite past. That's Everybody right. has a different past and a different future. The only thing we will ever share is the present moment. We come from different pasts and, and we, we go, go to, different, to futures. different futures. Yes, that's why we've come to Lisbon to break time. That's why we've come to Lisbon to break time. That's why we've come to Lisbon to break time. times in different places here in Lisbon. Uh, do you think it's possible? You got to get back to living time, which is organic time, because it's got nothing to do with clocks whatsoever. Oh, well, we are trying to do what we can, you know, doctor. Yeah, well, biological time, that's what Einstein calls excite, subjective time, but your inner time. And you never get any consensus. Everybody's creating their own organic, subjective, biological time. But uh, this clock time that the English invented is an attempt to get you out of the pub and back to work before it's good for a man to leave the pub. And uh, that, that's the kind of time I'm objecting to, this clock time. It's totally fictitious. The real time is the biological time you experience. What the clock says is a diabolical capitalist invention to wreck your spirit and turn you into a slave. Don't pay any attention to it. created an engine of destruction that nobody knows how to stop because it appeals to the worst in us, product fetishism. That's what capitalism is all about. It's getting people to identify personal well-being with the possession of physical objects. 
the only way we can satisfy everyone's desire for products is to cut down the rainforests, dig the mines deeper, run the factories 24 hours a day, and then we can give people all this junk that they think they want, but it turns out it's not satisfying. It creates, you know, neurosis, broken families, alcoholism, uh, bad marriages, so forth and so on. We have lost our cultural compass. Passando os testes do patrão, mas estou cá desconfiado que ficou sem as orelhas do Nicky Lauda. É, a, a dona Ivone, ali dos registros comerciais, não estava cá um correto? <risos> Aquilo era com o cavalo marinho. the shockwave of eschatology. What does this mean? It means we must live as though the apocalypse had already happened. It means we must part company with all the false value systems that have led to this moment. History has failed. Evasion! Evasion! Evasion is the key to sliding through the cracks of the linear dominator society. You must evade all these traps and live in the authentic moment. This is where you are freed. Any given moment in time is not created by the moments which immediately precede it, as science would have us believe. Rather, every moment in time is a complex interference pattern created by moments far in the past and potentially far in the future that have a particular mathematical relationship to each other. And I believe that I have discovered the nature of this fractal, involuting spiral of time and can now use computers not only to predict with great accuracy the past, but also to predict the future. This does not mean that the future is determined and somehow is only appearing to undergo the formality of occurring, but it does mean that we now have a tool for predicting precisely where in the future we should expect extremely unusual events and when these maps of novelty become generally known throughout the world, the future will lose its terror. It will cease to be a dimension into which we have no insight. Rather, we will have a kind of map of time. Now, some people have accused me of trying to destroy the future, but this is absurd. This is like saying that if you have a map of South America, you have destroyed all reason for going there. Not at all. If you have a map of South America, you will enjoy your tour much better because you will know how to avoid the uninteresting places and how to linger in the interesting places. And as to whether or not my theories are correct, I leave that judgment to, to my peers and to the very little bit of history that still remains between us and the final shattering confrontation with the concrescent transcendental object that is now throwing an enormous shadow over the landscape of the late 20th century. 
entire history of the universe has led to this momentous occurrence and human beings and the cultures of the late 20th century are to be the birthing mechanism for a new order of space and time that will emerge very, very suddenly. Science gives us the Big Bang. I give you the Big Surprise. and thanks to your efforts, we have different speeds happening in Lisbon. Look, there's yes, another chronos in plastic infundibulum. Take back Take your, back mind. your mind. History, History is, ending. is ending. History, History is, ending. is ending.
Psychedelic drugs, art, revolution, sex, sex, revolution, art. I believe in these things. They should understand that there is no bars to hold me or our ideas. From now on, tomorrow lasts forever, and it belongs to the revolutionaries, the time travelers, the dreamers. This is the end of the reign of the constipated nitwits and their blood-sucking stooges. Forward to the new order of the transtemporal dream. Forward! Science gives us the Big Bang. I give you the Big Surprise. climatéricas muito intensas, especialmente na região do Pai. Há um frio de rachar. Passei por lá esta manhã e fica aí regelado. Eu olho boi a minha tia Greta. Diz cá, varejeiras tropicais na Marquise. Acho muito estranho. Está um calor tropical em olho boi. Não se consegue ir. Isso da colete. Oh, doutor, só que melhor. Uh, anota aqui este, este verbete. Ouvi dizer que o mal da ajuda está um granizo do caralho. Nem mete granizo até o joelho. Queimou as alfaces todas. Olha, por favor, ali no mau tempo, faz favor. É esquisito, não? É verdade. Uh, Alô? E roubou, inclusive, uma perna lápis ao seu Há tempo, volto por trás. Dá-me tudo o que eu perdi. Já não vi um granizo assim desde o tempo do Marquês de Pombal. No cais das colunas, um frio de rachar. Caiu das colunas, caiu. Mas as varejeiras não caiu das colunas. Foi o chefe de cantar. O chefe é o romântico. A vida que eu já vivi, ao tempo volta para trás. Agora as minhas tantas vãs Vê que até o próprio sol Volta todas as manhãs Vê que até o próprio sol Volta todas as manhãs O tempo volta para trás Dá-me tudo o que eu perdi Tem pena e dá-me a vida a vida que eu não vivi, o oh, tempo volta para trás, o oh, tempo volta para trás. É, dá-me tudo o que eu perdi, tem pena em ti, dá-me a vida, a vida que eu já vivi, o oh, tempo volta para trás. Larga as minhas tranças vãs Vê que até o próprio sol Volta todas as manhãs Vê que até o próprio sol Volta todas as manhãs O tempo volta
Mendia, Barata e Souto Maior, não estamos no Carnaval. Este momento será deduzido no vosso vencimento. Muito bem, Sr. Comendador de Esperança Martins. Tem toda a razão, exaltando. Eu não quero que isto se volte a repetir. is very simply uh, someone who has seen the end. The shaman is somehow able to take the good and the bad together and come out of that encounter with a feeling of optimism and wholeness. In other words, a shaman is someone who has risen up out of the ordinary dimensions of daily life and actually looks down over the landscape of ordinary occurrence, and having seen the end, the shaman is liberated from anxiety and comes back to his or her society then, able to be an example, an exemplar, a kind of superhuman person who can cure, who can find lost objects, who can to some degree see into the future. The ordinary answer to that question would be a shaman is a folk medical practitioner. But from having lived with these people in the Amazon, I really believe that mathematics provides the best model for understanding shamanism. They actually have a kind of hyperspatial perception. And so they can knit their society together. Shamans predict weather, find game, settle interpersonal difficulties within the group. All of this is done 
through a superior knowledge of cause and effect that is obtained by rising up to this higher dimensional viewpoint. The supermind. You could think of it as the supermind, but to creatures in two dimensions, we would appear to be the supermind. It's simply that each world is somehow embedded in a larger world of dimensionality. And when we access that larger dimension, we attain a kind of superhuman condition. The shaman visits the end. Well, all that precedes the end. In other words, it's like turning to the last page of a novel and finding out how it all comes out. Once you know how it all comes out, you're free from the ordinary anxieties of worry and concern. You return to your place in time, more like an actor on the stage rather than a person caught in a universe they can't understand. That's the key thing. The shaman understands the universe in which he or she is living, and the rest of us are only provisionally groping to understand. And this understanding is achieved through this higher dimensional viewpoint. The shaman literally looks down on time as a king looks down on his kingdom from his castle. So shaman should be a king? No, kings should be shamans. In ordinary terms, yes, because the shaman can do things other people can't do. A simple example would be, here we have a locked box. We don't know what is in this locked box, but if we could rise up to hyperspace, we would discover there is a hole in the box, and you can easily see what is within it. It appears as magic to those who don't understand it, to those who do understand it, it simply is a deeper vision of ordinary life. Yes. No, I don't think the shaman fears the end because the fearfulness of the end is its unknowability. You know, what is death? What is the end of history? As long as you don't know, these things become a screen for the projection of your inner doubts and fears. Once you know, then it's possible to return to ordinary life and live it to the fullest. This is why shamans are often people who have survived some incredible ordeal or disease or psychedelic experience because those kinds of intense experiences give you the correct perspective on your life and the lives of the people around you. Certain things you may not have thought of as important become important and things you may have thought of as very important are seen to be trivial and uh, without real worth. So it's a shift in perspective and it's a way of relating to the felt presence of the moment. This is very important. A shaman lives in the moment in a way that we who are the inheritors of Western civilization, phonetic alphabets and print culture can't even imagine because our whole lives are based on such thoughts as I'll be happy when I, I'll feel better when I. It's always projected into the future. The shaman is somehow able to take the good and the bad together and come out of that encounter with a feeling of optimism and wholeness. Well, a shaman is very simply uh, someone who has no, seen the end. Simply, the shaman uh, is somehow able to take the, the good and the bad together and come out of that encounter with a feeling of optimism and wholeness.